The Detroit Lions have won three straight meetings with the Green Bay Packers in a rivalry that Green Bay used to absolutely dominate. How can the Packers get their edge back? Matt Derry from Locked On Lions joins me for a crossover Thursday, a game day Thursday, baby, to break it all down. It starts right now. You are Locked On Packers. Daily Green Bay Packers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski and I cover the Packers for The Leap a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. We have a crossover Thursday. Before we get there, this was recorded just as we were getting the announcements about who was in, who was out. A a bunch of the guys um, that we're wondering about are questionable. That's Jair Alexander. That's Zach Tom. That's Christian Watson. That's Aaron Jones. That's Devondre Campbell. David Bakhtiari is out. Will not play. Expect to see um, Aiden Hutchinson lined up against Rasheed Walker. And expect to see him, and this is something they just started doing, we're going to talk about it with Matt, lined up over Royce Newman if, in fact, that is who gets the start. Royce Newman gave up a slew of pressures last week, struggled in pass protection, and did not cover himself in glory in the run game either. So, uh, something to watch there for sure. All right, let's hit the crossover. Welcome inside a crossover Thursday on Thursday night football and NFC North showdown locked on Packers, locked on Lions. I'm Peter Bukowski, host of Locked on Packers with my pal Matt Derry from Locked on Lions. And today's episode, our crossover Thursday extravaganza brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the code all lowercase locked on NFL for that first deposit match up to $100. Matt, my friend, cannot wait Eight. to get into this with you. Uh, we got the Lions coming in. As slight favorites, according to our friends at FanDuel. As we head into this game, a couple common opponents in the Packers and, and Lions rear view, the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, so what is what is it you have your eye on coming in this week for the Detroit Lions in terms of big stories? Pete, it just seems like you and I were talking, a few, it seems like a few weeks ago that the Lions and Packers were wrapping up the season last year. But yeah. uh, you know, really the storyline for the Lions is just getting healthy. If they can get David Montgomery and Taylor Decker back for this game on Thursday night, that's just a big, big boost to the team that quite honestly against the Falcons, the offense was okay and did its part scoring 20 points, but it wasn't the Ben Johnson, look at us, you know, uh, putting up points, being creative offense. Uh, the, the the team has taken a step back without Decker at left tackle. Panay Sewell's moved over to that left side. They've had a cavalcade of people uh, on the right side from Matt Nelson, Dan Skipper, uh, Colby Soresdale. Yeah, but they need Decker back in the left. You made at least on one right. of those names up. What's that? You made at least one of those names up. No, those are real. I don't believe you. You know no, no, Dan no, Skipper. He's been on the team like 50 times. I thought I really was messing up here, but uh, (laughs) quite honestly, they need Sewell on the right, Decker on the left, and Montgomery running the ball between the tackles. Um, I would not want to see, and I think he's going to play, but I would not want to see a Rashawn Gary Soresdale matchup. I think Mm. that that would be a a massive advantage for Green Bay. So storyline is just getting healthy and also certainly a battle for first place. And I think the Lions feel like they're the better team. Now it's a matter of Beating the Packers fourth time in a row, that would not be easy. Not, not at all. What was going on up at Lambeau, you think? Yeah, I, I, the last time that had to have happened, like you might have been at WAER the last time that happened, four in a there row. There you go. The Lions. <laughs> uh, and I, I, it is really interesting because the evolution of this offense is very much reliant on Christian Watson and Aaron Jones getting healthy. We saw what they were able to do against New Orleans, 18 points in the fourth quarter. But for them to be able to sustain this, Right now, it's it's bailing wire and sheet metal. It is duct tape and Elmer's glue trying to trying to just ham and egg this all together. 
because they don't have their wide receiver one. They don't have David Bakhtiari. They don't have Aaron Jones. And so injuries, same same sort of situation with Detroit. Get these guys healthy. Now, the, the early word is Aaron Jones, Christian Watson. They're going to play. David Bakhtiari, Jair Alexander, very much in question. Elton Jenkins, almost certainly not going to be ready to go. He's got an MCL injury that's going to keep him out a couple of weeks. Probably after the bye would be the soonest you would see him for the Packers. So how much does that change their offense? That's the big thing. Like, is, is that the key to them being able to sustain offense? Is it the difference between, say, a 31-point performance in week one and then, you know, struggling to get to 18 points a week ago against a very similar style of defense, Aaron Glenn coming from that Dennis Allen tree. So uh, that is that is the thing for me. How does how does the appearance of Christian Watson in particular change what this offense can do? And then you mentioned it, Matt, like this week 18, that was that felt like a moment. And and I think you and I both felt it in real time. That was not supposed to happen. The script was not supposed to go that way. Aaron <laughs> right. Rodgers was supposed to have his ride off into the sunset against the team that he has beaten, you know, since time immemorial, especially in those crucial games late in the season. We talked about it on our crossover that week, all the times that they've played and the Packers have won those matchups when they've meant something like that. So is that real? How much of that is real? Does it carry over to Jordan Love and this like, that is just not football wise, but narratively, that's fascinating to me. It's funny. I, I watch Rogers on uh, on uh, the McAfee show every week. Just mm -hmm. to, I'm hoping to hear the name Peter Bukowski just one <laughs> time. I think that would be fantastic. Out of uh, Aaron Rodgers' mouth? Yes. I, well, oh, I, I I'd be I'd be nervous to hear what he said about me. That's what I'm saying. It would be pure entertainment. <laughs> I was watching your show the other day, and you but you said something on your show. You said Green Bay's what second in DVOA, and I know you're a big stat guy. Mm. Yeah. So what's that go? What's but so that's all with Aaron Jones not being 100% Bakhtiari and that whole controversy. And Watson hasn't played yet. So what's yeah. what's happening there? Well, the so you mentioned DVOA. So offensively, the Packers are ninth in total DVOA. So for those of you unfamiliar with DVOA, mm -hmm. defense adjusted value over average. So basically, how efficient are you relative to the opponents that you've played? Now, right now. There is no opponent adjustment or very little. Um, and so it's really just how good have you been? So DVOA early in the season means less than it does later in the season. But the Packers offensively second through the air uh, in, in offense. They're 27th running the ball. This is, this is another part of this that's weird, uh, Matt. And we're going to get into the matchups here. I think the, the Lions defense has a decided advantage on the ground right now. And that is not something that I expected to say. That has not been something that we've been able to say about the Lions. No. I mean, when was the last time? Was Indomitian Sue in the building? Was Nick Fairley yeah. in the building the last time? <laughs> yes. That was something. 2014, that, there you go. Yeah, so that is a weird thing. Um, this Packers offense, like I said, is, has been reliant on the passing game with Jordan Love, which is not what we thought was going to be <laughs> the situation here. But yes, number, number two in pass game DVOA, um, and, and only to the, the Miami dolphins who are number one. So pretty, pretty good 27th though, running the ball. And, and that's why Aaron Jones back is such a big deal here. How have they put this defense together? How have they changed the way that they have been able to stop the run aside from, I noticed this one little thing and I, you know, we're going to have plenty of time to talk about the matchups. I saw Aiden Hutchinson line up as a three tech, as an interior defensive lineman more than I have ever seen just yeah. against Atlanta. Is that a new thing this year? Is that something that they're going to, that you well, think they're going to try and do? He did it last year, but because the interior of the D line, nobody recorded any stats against Seattle. I think Aaron Glenn said, screw this. Those guys are going to get less snaps. Other than Lee McNeil, most of those interior guys, Isaiah Bugs, owns Rike, some others didn't play all that much. They got some snaps and they actually played well when they were out there. Same with Benito Jones, but yeah. Yeah, Hutchinson uh, on some passing downs, especially was kind of lined up inside, even on some second downs, uh, and he did just fine. I mean, he's been good. I think the biggest thing is their linebacking core, the Lions, is the best it's been in years. I mean, probably mm -hmm. going back to Levy and Tulloch, you know, when, when when Jack Campbell is the number 18 overall pick and he can't get on the field much because Derek, uh, Derek Barnes is playing so well and Anzalone's everywhere. I mean, yeah. Anzalone was a one-man wrecking crew against you guys last year in week 18. So those guys are playing well and they're really, and they're doing better against the tight ends. I know Disley had a big game two weeks ago, but this past week Pitts was fine. Uh, they, uh, there was one ball Ritter missed, which we're going to be saying a lot of this year. 
Yeah, Although he didn't. He didn't in the fourth quarter against you guys, but that could um, have been a touchdown. That Kyle Pitts play, right? But I think the Lions' defense is just there's more depth there. I mean, look, you lose Chauncey Gardner Johnson and Huge. Kirby Joseph last week, and Melifanu comes in and plays well. Tracy Walker's a former starter that now is playing again and has to start again. There's some depth there, and that's just a credit to the front office. They've done a good job. Who's who is going to be? the starting secondary on Thursday night. Like, do you, can you just like, I'm, I'm trying to look at the depth chart. I'm like, okay, trying to figure out, okay, who's playing, who's healthy. Like what is, who, who's it going to be? So you'll, you'll have Sutton. You'll have Jacobs. I don't think Mosley will be ready yet. Brian branch is just big. That was dude's big. Incredible time. last week. I, mean, I don't know what the, pa- I, I know you make trades and you don't know, you know, like the Packers went, sure. We'll give you 45. And I'm telling you, you know, they may rue the day that they helped the Lions. And maybe, look, he may have been there at 48 anyway, but the Lions had to move up to get this kid, and he's been phenomenal. So, yeah, I would say, I don't know about Kirby Joseph yet. It's either going to be him or Melifonwu and then Tracy Walker. So, uh, Will Harris is there if they need him. They've got some depth there. But uh, eventually they're going to get Emmanuel Mosley back, and that will help. And you can move Jacobs to more of a, uh, uh, more of a you know, co-starring role. Maybe it doesn't matter because Aaron Rodgers is the guy that that Kirby Joseph really just like owned last year. Yeah. Um, but that that seems like that was that would be a, a big to have him, especially given the way the Packers want to attack down the field. We're going to dive into all the fun matchups, all the good stuff of this week four primetime battle coming up in a second. All right, folks, uh, Matt and Pete here to tell you about our friends at Harry's Razors. Listen. When you get that starter set from Harry's, you got to try it out because it really, really is good. No matter why you shave, Harry's has you covered for the best shave of your life at a price that you'll love. You get better quality and a better price than other razors when you get Harry's delivered right to your door. And that's what we want now. We want stuff delivered to our door. We don't want to go out and have to to spend a lot of money on on, on blades at a store. Not at all. All right. Packaging's cool. The razors look good. The starter set's a $13 value that you can get for just $3 at harrys.com slash nfl includes a five blade german engineered razor weighted handle foaming shave gel and a travel cover all right scheduled delivery for refills as low as two bucks half what you pay for other blades creams washes lotions they've got those as well that will keep your skin healthy and hydrated harry's has the highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industry so give them a shot get your best shave ever this summer with harry's razors and skincare products get a 13 dollars starter set For just three bucks at harrys.com slash NFL. That's harrys.com slash NFL for a $3 starter set. So I mentioned the defense and the improvement that they made here, Matt. Locked on Packers, locked on Lions coming back here. And Brian Branch, it just seems like he has coalesced this group in in a way because it it has allowed everyone to just fit into roles. They don't have... That true yet superstar, because Brian Branch, man, if he keeps playing the way he did against Atlanta, will be a superstar here very quick. Um, and Hutchinson also not, you know, he's not in that tier with Watts and Garrett's and all those guys. But how how has how, how has to you, at least your eyes this this defense changed? Because I look at it and it seems like they're just so much more adaptable to what they need to be. Play different against the Chiefs than you do against the Falcons because you need to. Uh, what are you what are you seeing from this defense? Well, I think you just you just said it, Pete. I don't need to really add any more, but let's <laughs> be honest. They Aaron Glenn, everybody said, Oh, the, the scheme and all this, and Aaron Glenn in his third year, and he got a lot of heat at the start of last season. People wanted him fired. Heck, after the Seattle loss this year, they're like, Aaron Glenn's not the guy. The bottom line is, you know, two weeks in a training camp, there were some people, Dave Burkett of the Free Press and others writing. Could Brian Branch be the best player on the defense right now? And it's like, wait a minute, he's a rookie second round pick. Hutchinson's on this defense. CJ Gardner Johnson's on this defense. Anzalone and some others. You know, Romeo Quar is making big money as a as sort of a, a you know a defensive end and, and, and a rotational edge guy. Like best player on the defense already. And then you watch him in week one with a pick six. You watch him against Atlanta. I, he was everywhere. And it's like, where the hell? How did he last till 45? He's that. And it's good. not like he went to our so, sisters of perpetual sorrow. This is an Alabama guy. Like he wasn't, a, he wasn't, he wasn't a right. secret. Amazing. And so he's just around the ball, whether it's against the run against the pass. And I think that's the thing. It's like, 
for years you go, why can't the Lions have a honey bad a uh, honey badger type? Yeah. Tyron Matthew. And that's him. He he's he's just everywhere. Nickel corner, safety, you know, uh little 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 quick quick pop pass out to the outside. And he's the first guy there every time. And he's coming from across the field or even from a Mike linebacker spot uh, on the field. So he's just been really good, man. And, and they got to keep him healthy because uh, 32 and in, in white uh, on Thursday night will, will be a problem for the Packers. Yeah. I, I think the, the other side of this would be right. You look at what happened in Seattle and, and what the Seahawks were able to do. Geno Smith, I mean, 32 of 41 for 328, two touchdowns. Um, and, and to me, when I was watching that game, I was like the speed of this Seahawks offense was, was giving, um, uh, the, the lions defense problems. And that is how this Packers defense or excuse me, Packers offense has changed, Matt. Like that was the point of this off season, Al Lazard lions killer, Al Lazard, by the way, yeah. uh, out the door, he's playing in Floral Park, New Jersey, Randall Cobb along with him. Um, Big Bob Tunyon, Mercedes Lewis. These were veteran guys Aaron Rodgers loved. But let's be honest, they were not winning any track meets with anyone. And and I, I keep going back to what I saw at week 18. The only guy who was getting open against the, the Detroit defense was Christian Watson. Yeah. And that is, I think, going to be different this time around. Romeo Dobbs healthy, was not healthy in that game. By the way, Rashawn Gary, not healthy. Torn ACL did not play in that game. Jaden Reed, they bring in. He's a low four fours, high four threes guy. Dontavian Wicks has made some plays down the field. I think this is such a cool moment, Matt, because both of these teams are trying to establish themselves with these new identities. And in a lot of ways, they're identities that are meant to counteract one another. You bring in this chess piece like Brian Branch. Well, the Packers, that's what they got Luke Musgrave for to try and attack teams that have specialty defenders. Oh, you're going to split Bijan Robinson out. You're going to split Kyle Pitts out. We've got this guy. Come meet, come meet my friend Brian, and he he will follow you around all day. From the moment you get out of the out of the bus, he's going to be in your shirt. So there is this cat and mouse game that I think is a really fun part of this game, and it's also the defense cat and mouse. I've talked about this a, a lot this week. This is just so bizarre. Week two, the Packers play the Falcons. Ryan Nielsen, defensive coordinator. He was the defensive line coach in New Orleans under Dennis Allen. Week three, they play Dennis Allen. And week four, they play Aaron Glenn, who not only played for Dennis Allen, but coached under Dennis Allen. And their structure is very similar to the way that uh, you see Dennis Allen and the Saints wanting to play. My question, I think, for you right now is the same as I, as I had last year, and it's the same as I would have had coming into the season, even with all of the additions that they made, is are these corners, even with Brian Branch, who they had playing like straight out, like weak side up, like linebacker last week against the Falcons? Yeah, uh, everywhere. Can they can they hold up against the speed of this Packers offense now that it's speedy? The corner back room is still going to be where I go. This is where I think Green Bay can attack. Well, I'll I'll say this: Sutton is really good, and like yeah. that was their big signing before they got C.J. Gardner Johnson. But Cam and plays Sutton, with attitude, which I love. Yeah, you never hear his name on the broadcast because he's covering his guy and he runs back to the huddle. I mean, there's not a lot of action on his side. The guy that's being picked on a lot is Jerry Jacobs. Like I said, they yeah. signed Emmanuel Mosley to a one-year deal from San Francisco for a reason. Now he's slow to get back from the ACL last year. And like I said, I don't think he'll be ready yet on Thursday night. But uh, Jacobs is a guy that they're going to pick on. They'll pick on him again. That's why if Branch can come over and help, if if Tracy Walker can come over and help. But again, if the pass rush is there like it was Sunday against Atlanta with the seven sacks, yep. you know, it'll force Love to have to make some decisions and, and do some things differently. I, I love the fact that this is, like you said, a little mano a mano and the Packers have this speed because, like you said, in week 18, that offense looked really, really slow. Mm. Uh, and the Lions offense was the one moving. Yep. Uh, question back to you is I just love the play action pass that, that, that the Packers have incorporated here with love. He's selling it well. And you guys, you guys seem like you have like four tight ends on the field at all times, right? Yeah. It, they're, they're mixing personnel in, in really interesting ways. I think the difference in, cause I, I can just hear lions fans pushing back right now on you. Hey, we just played the play action team. This is the Atlanta Falcons. All they no. did was play action. Well, here's the problem. If you can't do anything in the straight drop game, the play action game is less effective. I like right. I, I I don't know what the numbers say about that. I know the numbers say you can you don't have to have a good run game to get good play action game. 
But I just, I watched the Falcons and they, to me, seem like a tensile test for this idea. Desmond Ritter could not do anything in the dropback game. And so if you don't respect the dropback game, it just changes the way teams can defend you. And it's a little bit similar, honestly, Matt, to the Lions, because Jared Goff in the dropback game last week, not very good. No, but in the, in not the, one of his better games no. in the under center play action game, he's ripping these, these over routes, the beautiful corner post to Sam Laporta, where he just gets wide ass open. Um, <laughs> yeah. The Packers scored on that concept last year to big Bob Tunyon against the bears and then got scored on against George Kittle two years ago, three years ago. Um, I think three years ago, it, it is a, a staple Matt LaFleur concept. I'm telling you the Packers are going to score with Luke Musgrave on that concept at some point this season, but the way that they can call this offense with Jordan Love is just different than with Aaron Rodgers. They can go to that under center play action game. They can call zone read on the two yard line, which by the way, Jared Goff scored on like last that. week, which I just thought was incredible. I don't, but, I, I, but his, uh, his Ford field leap was not good. It wasn't the best. A... It wasn't the best. <laughs> uh, but even I, then I, then I'm like, he made fun of it after the fact. And I'm just yeah. like, like the, this is the thing that's annoying about Jared Goff over the last couple of years is, I'm just like, I hear him talk and I see him play. And I, I, the, the slander that he endured for a couple years from me included. And I'm just sort of like, damn, do I like Jared Goff now? I know because it is that kind of thing. But, but to your question, um, the, the Lions defense should be relatively prepared for this because they see it every day. Ben Johnson is a play action King. And the, the way that they use, I mean, I was taking my notes and I, I can just read you like word for word what the note is. It's it's just like you have to be able to communicate the pass offs, the pass offs and the crossers because they are going to create leverage pre-snap. They're going to condense their splits or they're going to go to bunch looks and the Packers do the same thing. So it's like, okay, you see this every day in practice, both sides can, who can defend it better? And that's, that's going to be the interesting question here. You, you mentioned DVOA. Matt, uh, the the fifth ranked fifth ranked run defense the Lions have in DVOA, but I think I think Packer fans might be surprised to know that in total defensive DVOA the Packers actually have a better current mark than the Lions. Packers are tenth in DVOA, the Lions are twelfth. Well, the Patriots Lions are fifth. right there in the middle. Some of that too, we can thank Arthur Smith. I have no idea why last week Bijan had ten carries and that was it. I mean, even even Jameer Gibbs had seventeen. Like. John Robinson is a stud. The guy carries a ball for eight yards and then he's on the sidelines for Algier for three series. Like what, what <laughs> that made no sense to me. I, I thought the lions did a much better coaching job this past Sunday than Atlanta. Cause to me, Bijan's your horse and he spends half the game on the sidelines it made no sense to me. I didn't understand that either. I think Arthur Smith is a little hamstrung by his quarterback and that causes him to make some weird decisions. I said this watching the tape yesterday, like, uh, losing to that Falcons team, given the way that like that offense for three quarters against the Packers did nothing. And for four quarters, they did nothing against Detroit. They are that team. They're not the team we saw in the fourth quarter in week two and the Packers letting them do that and winning a game because of that. It's just, it's just a biff. It's just a bad, bad biff. Um, speaking of the things that can win or lose the game, you and I are going to decide what will decide this game. In just a second here, Locked on Packers, Locked on Lions, a crossover Thursday. And of course, crossover Thursday brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Oh my God, it's you against the numbers. This is so much fun. If you haven't played this, this football season yet, you need to be doing that. You need to be doing that Thursday night when Lions and Packers go at it. You pick more than or less than on two to six players with their stat projections. And you watch the winnings roll in. It's simple. Prize Picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times. My money this football season, you should select two or more players, like I said, pick more or less in those projected stats and watch the money roll in. Seriously, it's like you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Uh, you look at any of the projections that are out there. A guy like Justin Jefferson, you honestly think he's going to have less than 100 yards this week? Maybe he will. Put some money down on that. What about Odell and the combo with Lamar Jackson in Baltimore? All of those things are in play at prize picks go to their website prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl and use the code locked on nfl for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars again prizepicks.com go there now slash locked on nfl use the code locked on nfl for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy 
All right, finishing up here. Locked on Packers, locked on Lions. Matt Derry, Peter Bukowski, Thursday night football. First place in the NFC North, Matt, on the line. Absolutely cannot You and I called this. this. We called this with the other guys during the uh, during the preview yep. shows when they were Brett. Remember? Come on, our, our boy. Let's 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 uh, let's get on our boy Luke Braun. Luke. Case, Mr. Vikings. Uh, I still think we can be at the top. Come on. You know it's well, you and me, Pete. Come on now. <laughs> listen, listen, uh, Luke also was trying to say that they were not frauds last year. And let's be honest, they were frauds last year. And you know who agrees yeah. with me? Their front office, because they've been tearing this down for the last, uh, I don't know, year and a half. Oh. So the, the two best teams in the NFC North un unquestionably take the field on Thursday night. <laughs> What's up, Luke? <laughs> and Lauren, God, poor Lauren Cox, our guy. Oh my uh, God. He's such a nice just, guy. And just going through it. Yeah. You, you, in this case, you hate to see it, but for Bears fans, well, um, I, I, uh, I, I think this is going to be one of those games where both teams at the end go, we should have won that game. It's going to be a nip and tuck back and forth kind of game. Uh, what do you think ultimately will be the reason that one of these teams wins or loses? On the Lions side, they've got to clean some things up on the penalty front. They have yeah. been really, really lucky to be one and one in their last two games, despite all the penalties. First game in Kansas City, everybody was watching. They weren't penalized in the first half. Uh, Taylor, the right tackle for the Chiefs, should have been penalized like every play, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, finally, has, has been. But the Seattle game, sloppy, dumb penalties. Uh, Ten penalties, including four. Five, I believe, on the offensive line this past week in the win over the Falcons. You cannot yep. do that at Lambeau. We know the history with the with, with some phantom flags uh, with Lions under the lights in Green Bay uh, years ago, right, uh, for roughing the passer and stuff. But the Lions have got to just be a little bit cleaner with how they're playing right now. I don't think they're going to go into Lambeau and cheap shot or do anything dumb, but I'm just saying if we're sitting here again talking about yeah, three Walker. or four holds, or, right, they've got to be – so I think the Lions have got to be playing a cleaner football game. Um, the, and I, again, it, sometimes it depends on the crew, but I think that's the first key for me with Detroit. What about for you and Green Bay? You know, I, this, unfortunately, it's boring. I have the same answer because the Packers in the first half could not get out of their own way. Absolutely could not get out of their own way. Dumb penalties. They couldn't get lined up, Matt. And like that is that is the kind of thing that you can't have happen. Like holding, the, the Lions just couldn't block Atlanta. That was that was why they were getting called for these holding penalties is because Bud Dupree and Grady Jarrett was they were eating them up and you're you're going against backup offensive linemen so you so, you sort of understand it but when you're when you're getting procedure penalties and you're making those kinds of mistakes like that's the that's the rookie growing pain stuff that I think people expected coming into the season I mean you're you're a first time quarterback under center making his first start at Lambeau this is his first prime time start at Lambeau Field. His first career start was, of course, a primetime game. Um, and you're looking at a rookie wide receiver in the slot, a rookie tight end. Um, who knows what that offensive line is going to look like? Uh, and so th they're, in, they're in a similar situation. The defense, I think, is going to be fine from a penalty standpoint. But offensively, they got to get some of that stuff cleaned up. Uh, this is, and we talked about it last segment, the battle of the, of the play action games. It's going to be, I think, one one big play. One one team is going to hit one more play action shot play, and I think that's going to be the difference. Um, and just sort of relatedly, I think that will be because in the red zone, one of these teams is going to have to have a moment where they need to score in the the low red zone, and they don't have the play. We saw it with Detroit. They have one holding call. They're in the they're in the like the ten yard line. They have one holding call. And now they can't on first and 20 or whatever it was, first and 18, they can't go to their play action game. They can't go to their screen game, their draw game. They try and go straight drop back and they couldn't get in. And so to me, that is going to be the difference. That's why I think I have the Packers 27, 24. I think the Packers can execute in the drop back game better than the Lions can. And that to me is the difference. I'm actually going to take the Lions. Uh, Let's I go. <laughs> I think it's going to be around that same score. Have you ever picked the lines on my show? I don't know. I don't think I ever have. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I know I didn't last year because the fans <laughs> let me have it, but I would say tw same type of thing 27, 24, 28, 24 type of game. I, I think the Lions, like I said, I mean, they didn't, they could play better than they have so yeah. far this year. I mean, even the Kansas Both City game, they were, 
there there were times where you went they could play better and they and they won. Seattle they weren't great. Obviously the offense was, but I think you're going to see a Jameer Gibbs utilization finally from Ben Johnson the way they want him to. I don't know if they were holding out until this game to, to bust out uh, a couple of uh, uh, maneuvers with him in motion, uh, bubble screen, uh, you know, end around, something with Gibbs the that he's utilized the way that Both they wanted to use him from week plays. one, but they haven't. Last week he had to be the bell cow with Montgomery out, and I think he's going to play. At least David will give it a shot. So that's where I'll go. And I, The one thing that concerns me, though, that Packers field goal defense is back. I saw I saw what happened to the uh, that poor Saints rookie kicker the other day. So we have not had any issues with Riley Patterson so far this season, but I just have a weird vibe that I believe the Money Badger missed one last year at Lambeau. So I think if it's close and it's a 47-yarder, I'm hopeful, but I, I smell a miss at some point. Will it come back to bite the Lions? I'm going to say no this time, but keep an eye on that, Pete. Fascinating. Anders Carlson, who was a disaster in camp and uh, all throughout uh, the, the spring and the summer, has been perfect so far this season. This is me knocking on wood for the Packers' sake. Um, just because you said that, now it's going to be Anders Carlson who does that at the <laughs> game. Uh, I'm not going not gonna to jinx anybody, but um, this has been so fun, Matt. I appreciate always getting to talk with you. This is going to be a great game. It's a bummer that this does not get to happen again for a while, but know. who knows? Next time we talk, could be big, big, big time stakes on the line and the weather will be much cooler than it is right now. Uh, let's uh, let's have some fun and we'll talk to everyone. Right, I'm going to be, I'll be live Thursday after the game. Are you going live? I will be. Then we will see you all live after the game on Thursday night. All right. Thanks to Matt for joining the show. Awesome to do the breakdown with him. We are live tonight on YouTube, baby. Let's do it. Our Locked on Packers YouTube. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to come hang out with us live, you can do it on our YouTube page, Locked on Packers YouTube. Go subscribe and come hang out with us live after the game so you can stay Locked on Packers.